I know we cover a lot of hyper premium stuff on this channel, GTX Titan XPs, Extreme Edition CPUs and the like. Mostly it's for the wow factor because you guys seem to love that stuff. But that doesn't mean that that's what any of you actually buy. So what does the typical LTT viewer buy? To find out, I went through our entire Amazon Associates report for last month, all 7,690 line items of it, to find the most popular PC components in the list and put together what I'm calling the Viewer's Choice Award computer. I also found some other really interesting stuff in there. You guys be freaky. Rawr. Intel's Skull Canyon NUC features a 6th generation Core i7 quad-core processor and Thunderbolt 3. Learn more at the link in the video description. The CPU was a shocker. I said very clearly to our, I thought, gamer-heavy audience in last month's video entitled what CPU should I buy, that I didn't recommend anything higher than the Core i5-6600K for gamers. But, more than all other CPUs combined, the most popular choice was the Core i7-6700K, with half of those folks evidently opting for Cooler Master's great value, if not particularly amazing, Hyper 212 Evo heatsink to go with it. Most people chose Corsair Vengeance LPX memory with the mode average speed being 3200 MHz and the most popular capacity being a single 2x8 gig kit for Chrome. Far and away the most popular motherboard was the ASUS Z170A, which outsold the rest of ASUS's lineup put together. So it looks like, then, my message about higher-end motherboards not performing any better came through loud and clear, with most of you not valuing the extra features on the higher-end models. Video cards were the most popular computer component purchases among our viewers, with NVIDIA holding 87% of the market share by units and a staggering 95.1% by revenue. Though it would appear that our viewers, at least the ones who shop at Amazon using our code, skew heavily toward the high end. The GTX 1070 and 1080 combined for over half of all video card sales on our report. I mean, these are $450 and $700 cards. Then on the board partner side of things, EVGA was alone out front with ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI all battling hard for the number two spot. And the top selling video card overall then was a tie between the EVGA GTX 1080 FTW Gaming and MSI's Gaming GTX 1070. Maybe putting gaming in the product name really does work, at least on Amazon, where it's damn near impossible to use the filters to find anything. Storage was a landslide victory. The Samsung 850 Evo outsold the rest of Samsung's lineup and everyone else combined, with 500 gigs as the most popular capacity by far. This is what happens, I guess, when Intel just doesn't refresh their SATA SSDs, except when they feel like it. Though in Intel and Micron's defense, Samsung's industry-leading TLC 3D NAND flash and accompanying controller technology makes them very hard to compete against without losing your shirt on every sale. Most of our viewers, unsurprisingly, chose the cheaper OEM Windows 10 Home, but this is cool. About a third of them went with retail copies of Windows 10 on a USB drive instead of a download or a disk, something I suspect more people would do if they knew it was available for 30 bucks more than OEM and the same cost as the download one, with the more flexible retail copy license terms. The most popular power supply was a bit of a surprise to me, but maybe it shouldn't have been. EVGA Supernova 650 G1 80 plus gold 650 watt unit has a fully modular interface and a 10 year warranty, both of which likely allowed it to handily beat out the rest of the crowded power supply market. The case was sort of a tie actually. Both the NZXT S340 and Fantex Eclipse P400S sold the same number of units. 
but Fantax moved almost as many of the $10 cheaper and nearly identical P400. So I'm going to give them the win here, and it's a really impressive case for 70 to 80 bucks. For cooling fans, this was another, are you guys even paying attention moment for me? Corsair's AF series was far and away the most popular. To be clear, I've got no issue with Corsair fans, but the SP series is a better all-rounder. I know it, Corsair knows it. How many AF variants do they even have of their newer lineup? So why are you guys buying AFs when SPs are available? On to monitors, I'm giving the win to Acer with the R240HW BIDX IPS 23.8 inch. The Dell SE2416HX, also a 23 inch IPS, sold more units, but it was one guy buying 10 of them in one shot that pushed it over the edge versus individual buyers. So one person really liking something a lot doesn't make it popular. Peripheral wise, Y'all have very expensive taste in mice with the Logitech G502 Proteus Spectrum on a SteelSeries QCK mousepad taking care of your RGB desk decoration needs. More of you went with CM Storm Quickfire Rapids than any other keyboard, though I did notice that keyboard sales seemed a little tepid. I mean, maybe if you push out enough mechanical keyboards that can handle 50 million keystrokes before they break, people stop needing new ones at a certain point. And Kingston's HyperX Cloud 2 gaming headset was trailed closely by Sennheiser's HD598 Special Edition and the Antlion Mod Mic, either of which are great choices for a headphone or headset. We've got smart viewers sometimes. So let's throw up a summary of our viewer's choice PC here while I go over some other highlights. We'll have links, of course, to where you can buy all this stuff in the video description. So more of you buy Microsoft Xbox wireless adapters than I expected, and TP-Link seems to be the go-to for a cheap and cheerful network switch. Oh, and we sold a whopping five swing line staplers. It looks like at least some of you have learned that it's better to buy your own than to steal one from someone else. They're like $12. On the subject, though, of that last item, which isn't, strictly speaking, tech, there were a lot of cool things that I encountered, more than enough to do a full segment of cool and weird stuff our community buys on Amazon, or maybe if you have a suggestion for what we should call it, you could post that below. But with all the flack that I take every time we deviate ever so slightly from technology, with some going as far as to complain when we talk about tech that isn't PCs, hopefully you can understand my hesitation here. So let me know in the comments, did you like the PC version of this? Should we start tracking that regularly and looking for trends? Do you want to see the non-tech stuff as a separate segment? I promise you I will definitely be reading. Speaking of reading, read my lips, Braintree. Braintree is code for easy online payments. So if you're building a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With the Braintree V.0 SDK, which is one small snippet of code, you can be all set up in less than 10 minutes. They even have support staff ready to walk you through the process over the phone if you need them. Their code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients, and they have SDKs in seven programming languages. This makes it easy to offer multiple mobile payment types, including PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, Android Pay credit cards, and more, all with a single integration. It's elegant code with clear documentation, and to learn more, all you gotta do is head over to braintreepayments.com slash Linus, which we've got linked below. So thank you for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured at Amazon in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right corner to check out our latest video over on Channels Super Fun.